Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. This is the last video in the machine learning with imbalanced data series. In previous videos, we discussed the class imbalance problem where the number of samples in one class is far less than the total number of instances in other classes. Imbalanced data sets are prevalent in computer vision, healthcare data analysis, and we focus on the thyroid data set. In this video, our goal is to talk about another strategy to tackle the class imbalance problem known as ensemble learning. Ensemble methods are techniques that create multiple models and then combine them to produce improved results. Therefore, ensemble methods allow us to combine data level pre-processing methods as well as algorithmic level methods such as cost sensitive learning. As we mentioned before, there are three main categories to tackle the class imbalance problem. Data level pre-processing methods, including oversampling and undersampling, cost sensitive learning strategies, and the third one that we focus on it in this video is ensemble learning. The main idea behind ensemble learning is to fit base classifiers on random subsets of the training data to aggregate their individual predictions. As we can see in this illustration here, we have the training data set, and then we randomly sample a few uh, data points or a few instances and in this example we have three different subsets of the original data and now we can train a classifier on each subset so if you want now we can use cost sensitive learning methods in each subset or again you can use undersampling and oversampling techniques so therefore, one way to look at this is that these ensemble methods provide a wrapper so that we can um, combine different imbalanced learning strategies. And in terms of terminology, if we do sampling with replacement, it is called bagging. And if we do sampling without replacement, it's called pasting. So it's a very simple idea that has been very useful for many machine learning problems. To get a real feel of this problem, let's look at the thyroid data set again. We import NumPy and we import the thyroid data set and we have now the, the data matrix or feature matrix which is a two-dimensional array called X and then we have the target values Y. And we use the train test split from scikit-learn to divide the entire data that we have to training and test data sets. Here the test size is 30% of the entire data set. And then we, we apply logistic regression classifier on the training data set. And we know that this data set is in balance. As we see, we have 6% uh, that belong to the minority class or class uh, positive. And then the remainder of the samples belong to the negative class. And then we plot the confusion matrix, which shows that the classifier that we have has a very poor performance in terms of the number of false negatives, because out of 78 positive samples, we only can correctly classify 43 of them, and we have 35 false negatives here. So one approach to uh, tackle this problem is to use ensemble learning. And in order to do that, we use scikit-learn ensemble and we use bagging classifier. So that's how it allows us to implement uh, the bagging method that we just talked about it. And then we also using a SMOT um, that if you remember, this is an oversampling technique that we are going to use here. And so what we do is that we get the training data, we use a SMOT to oversample the minority class and now we have x train sampled and y train sampled and now we use this bagging classifier and the way it works you need to have a base estimator so this is, means that base classifier 
And here we're using logistic regression with default values. So that's why we have logistic regression and then two parentheses without any options. And then the number of um, the subsets that we want to have. So here we want to have 10 different uh, subsets of the training data. And then we are going to fit this to this sampled or it's better to say resampled uh, training data. And now we're going to plot the confusion metrics. And as you can see here, we are doing a much better job in terms of reducing the number of false negatives out of 78 positive samples. We have correctly classified 68 of them, and there are only 10 false negatives. And also we can check the number of false positives here. And as we can see, uh, here we have only 113 false positives. So overall, this classifier gives us much better and reliable results compared to what we had in the previous slide where we had uh, a large number of false negatives. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.